Good morning. Happy Friday. I have Neuro Coffee in hand and it is perfect. Okay. It's a good morning. Woke up this morning to check the box scores. Josh Lindblom, our, our boy at the Brewers, um, got, got his first win of the season, seven strikeouts. So a very solid appearance there. Also I've mentioned uh, Lomo, Logan Morrison, um, a pinch hit, one for one. So very, very exciting um, for both of our, our guys at the Brewers. By the way, you got to check out Lomo's Instagram. It's Lomo Graham. Um, if, you're, if you're a fan of coffee, baseball, and personality. Um, so check him out. We're going to lead into the weekend with a really good question um, that I think it will be helpful for a lot of people. Uh, it comes from Mikhail from Russia, so that's very exciting to, to have somebody um, send a question all the way from Russia. Um, it's a really good one, so here we go. If someone is standing on their left leg and the other leg has the hip and knee flexed to 90 degrees, um, and you see the standing leg turn into excessive external rotation and also abduct and extended, shame on you for thinking in the imaginary planes, but that's okay. Um, why is that and then what do you do with this? So this is really, really useful because it's very similar to my load propulsion test um, that, I, that I teach at the intensive and it's, it's also going to have some similarities to the gillet test. So if you're one of those people that uses those, those motion palpation tests, um, as if you're evaluating the, the sacroiliac joint, <clears throat> excuse me, um, this will also be helpful for you. But let's describe sort of what we should see under these circumstances and then what you're seeing and, and then we'll say, well, okay, what do we, what do, we do with this? How do, how do we improve this situation? And so what we want to think about is we're starting from a standing position, so we're not propelling ourselves forward, but we're sort of in this middle range of, of, of propulsion. So we're going to create a little bit of a delayed strategy um, where we're probably going to be a little bit more inhaled bias, a little bit more ER, and a little bit of counter nutation. So we're going to create a yielding strategy on this posterior aspect of the pelvis because if we're not propelling ourselves forward, we're going to create a delay strategy here in, in the pelvis. Now, <clears throat> if you recall, in this first early phase of, of hip flexion, we're still going to be in that ER bias, but as we approach 90 degrees, we're going to move towards an IR bias. So as the foot breaks the ground, and this would be our advancing leg if we were walking, we're going to create a, a, a bigger delayed strategy. So we're still going to be concentric yielding on this, this standing leg. So we're going to be starting in ER. But as we break that 60 degrees or so of, of hip flexion, we're going to start moving towards IR on both sides. So this leg, We'll be, we'll be slowly advancing forward towards the, that really strong middle range of, of propulsion in, in the, the, the stance leg. And this leg is going to be approaching 90 degrees of hip flexion, which we also know is going to be IR. So what we should see is the pelvis moving from a slightly ER position to an IR position. So we're going to see some mutation of the sacrum under these circumstances. And we're going to be approaching that IR um, position. And so um, if you've ever worked with, with kids and you have to do A, a marches or A skips and you'll see all sorts of, of sort of um, mobility issues or substitutions and you'll see them, them turning into or away from their hips or you'll see some side bending, these are the kids that can't really create this IR position of the pelvis where, where they have to have a concentric pelvic diaphragm and they can capture this internal rotation, which is the really strong propulsive positions. And so again, this is, this is why this position um, becomes very, very useful. Um, because when you start to see these substitutions, you know you've got somebody that cannot capture this internally rotated uh, position. Now, as we take the hip past 90 degrees, we're going to re-ER under both circumstances. So now I'm going to move this hip towards a later propulsive strategy. And I'm going to have this hip moving towards an early propulsive strategy. So now I'm going to create a delay on the lifting side leg. So as I break this 90 degrees and this goes into a deeper hip flexion, now I'm going to see this moving into a much more ER position on this side. So that's what should happen. So I should see the ER, the IR, and the ER strategy of, of this normal propulsive phase. But what you're seeing, Mikhail, is you're seeing that very, very early representation of this 
this external rotation on the standing or the support side leg. So you have somebody that's moving into the later propulsive strategy too soon. And, and so that's why you're seeing this really, really strong ER position when we know that we should be approaching IR under those, those circumstances. Now, so the question is, it's like, okay, so what's going on over here? Am I seeing an anterior orientation? Probably not, because the anterior orientation would actually steal my ability to ER this hip. So again, most likely we're just seeing this late, this later propulsive strategy too soon. Now, so what do we do about it? Well, it just so happens that we've been talking about this dur during the week. So what I want you to do is I want you to go back. I want you to look at um, this week's uh, video on the Camperini deadlift because that's gonna be the place where you're gonna start. So we gotta reorient the, the sacrum. So if I have this, this late propulsive strategy showing up too soon, I've got a sacrum that's getting pushed way over and, and facing the right, I gotta bring it back to the left. Camperini deadlift sequence is gonna be where you're gonna start. Then you're gonna move down into half kneeling and split stance activity so I can capture this, this really strong middle propulsive phase where I need to capture, capture the, the IRs. So now we have the normal mechanics restored where we have a sacrum that we can, we can reorient, we can move through the ER, the IR, and the ER phases of propulsion. Um, make sure you're addressing foot position as well. And I think that would provide you the, the best solution under the circumstances. So again, thank you for this question. It's a great question. Um, again, go Brewers, happy for the boys. Have a great weekend, and I will see you next week.